How about patronizing you? you, you... No, listen, I, I can tell by your body language that you're uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable with the conversation, then I'll, st I'll step back from the conversation. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. It's not a matter of being uncomfortable, it's a matter of annoyance. Because Why are you annoyed? The reason I'm annoyed, the reason I'm annoyed is because you don't seem to be getting the point, which is that no matter what any academic has said, we have the oral Torah, which has explained all of the internal contradictions in the, in the written Torah. So unless you get that through your head, that we actually have answers to your question, you mention and them, yeah. I'm not so, okay, so give, a, give, us, an, all right, give us an example, all right, of these internal contradictions that you have stated, right? That your, uh, I don't know, your oral your Torah. your scholars or your the old Torah has given explanation to, because yes, you're right. It, to me, Genesis chapter one verse three to, to me is a contradiction. And yes, we have academics and have done studies on, for example, where God says, "Let there be light," and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. This is talking about the light of the sun. Unless you're gonna. Oh no no, it's a light. See, there you are. Hold on. There you Islam. go. Islam. You keep on. Oh. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. It's not an Islamic it's thing. It's an atheist oh, thing. Wait, hold on a second. What, what, what about that? That's what Veltism did. did. It says light. He's doing the same thing Veltism did. Hold on a minute. Let me, let me ask you a question. You're doing exactly the same thing Veltism Okay. Okay. Exactly I'm going to ask you one simple question for both of you. Maybe you can answer me. Right. What separates the day and the night? What separates the day and the night? Yeah. What separates the day and the night? In the night, now we're separated by. by what? It depends by on where time. you are on no. it. What? It depends on where okay, you are. Okay, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it again. It said, "And God said, let there be light, yeah. and there was light." Okay, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Yes. Right. God called the light day. Are you hearing this? Yeah. Right. And the darkness he called night. Yeah. So my question is. What separates the day and the night? God. God separates. I would have, that's the one who separates it. God right. is the one who separates it. What? That's what the scripture what? says. What? Okay. The sun, okay. The sun, okay. Isn't it? Thank you very much. Right. The sun. Now, if we go further down. Well, of course it does. What, what, what do you have right now? What about the places where they call it? What do you call it? No, hold on a minute. Wait. So, are you telling me you don't know? My friend, let's be logical. I'm very logical. I'm being logical. If, you go, if you go to the North Pole right now, are you telling me that uh, when they've got this, they, this got light coming on them all the time, almost like 24 7? What about that? But hold on a minute, like, you haven't even answered my question. I asked you, the the night. brother, you're, so he's you're showing you how your question doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Okay, how does it make? Okay, go ahead. How does it make? Not, how, how does it not make sense? Because you were saying that the thing that separates the day and the night is the sun. And I'm saying to you, he said that God separates the day and the night. God did. He's the one that said God separates the day from the night. No, the real thing, not not the sunlight. No, what I'm saying. In your mind, you think well, the sun. Hold on. You know that's what Wait. you're thinking because you're, you're on earth. Okay, let me respond and to you. The scripture says let me God respond to you. The day from the night. Is, is Genesis not talking about the creation? Okay. Right. So when God is talking about the creation, he's talking about the advanced vegetable kingdom. In fact, if we go further down, right, I can actually, this actually proves that she's talking about the sun and not talking about God. You're making tight wheel. You're making. But the scripture says God separated the day from the night. That's what we're all saying. Listen, it says here. What the scripture said. Okay. Not your experience. I'm going to repeat See, it again. You want to use your experience. I didn't to even need to use Old Torah, though. That was easy. Really? God separated. It says it. By Yavdeh Lelokim, Bin Hur, Bin Hakusha. Is it a cosmological reality than God separated the day and the night? Is it a cosmological reality, yes or no? Well, it depends on your premise. Right. So, so it, depends, we, okay. it depends on your premise. Does God exist or does he not? Mm. If God exists, then yes, it is a cosmological no, reality. No, no, if God does not God exist, then no, it's agent. not. No, no, no. God is an agent. God is an agent. No, no, no. <laughs> me, no, no. God is the force of separating the day from the night. But that's not the question he asked. He asked what separates from the day and the night. God is a force. Or I, I, oh, what God you? The day ah, that's a better question. Oh, that's a much better question. There we go. So what's the answer? What does God use? 
I'm not a physicist. Right. This is going to be, listen, this is going to be a complete refutation uh, for what they said. Totally Do you know why? Because if we go to textbook. verse 14, this is proof that the light is intended here and not God. It says here, and God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens and the, to separate the day from the night. Right? It said, let there be what? Let there be light in the yeah. firmament light. of the heavens. Light. Yeah, that's actually true. It's the problem. Okay. Let there be light. Okay. Because you're focused on the sun. No problem. Thank you for the correction. Right. It says, let there be light. Right. What light is it speaking about here? Lights. Yeah. It's on the moon and the stars. It's about to say in a few verses. Good. Excellent. It says, yes. Yes, good. In the firmament of the heavens and the, to, to, in the heavens to separate the day from the night. So what is the separating factor? This is what I asked you earlier. You said it was God, but here it's saying it's the light. But my question, hold on, before you answer, my question is to you, God in verse 1 created the effect of light on the first day and he created the cause of light on the third day. That doesn't make sense. That's a contradiction. Now, Hold on one are, second. Are you saying God is contradicting himself? According to this, yes, because, definitely. Because, because we mentioned, because now, we this, is where I, this, is where I, this is where I bring... God is the one that separated the, the light on. from the... For, for, in, 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 when he said let there be light, he didn't say it was sunlight. He said let there be light. He didn't say let there be sunlight. Yes, but he also said to separate the day and the night. Let Listen, down in verse, no, in verse he said in verse says, 1... No, 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 no. You're not even reading this properly. In verse what? 1 it says... I'm going to read it again. Yes. Right? Let's go back up to the top. Because you're clearly not reading this properly. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Exactly. Did, right? Did, did, he say, God? did he say sunlight? Did he say sunlight? How, no, no, I'm but, asking you, did he say sunlight? No. The reason... So later on it mentions when the sun was created. That's it. No, 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 no. That's my point. You know, you don't get it. The reason why... I even get what he's saying. This is the reason why... He doesn't agree, but I hear what he's saying. This is the reason why... This is the reason why I brought up academics. This is the reason why I brought up academics. Because academics have pointed this contradiction out. Thank you very much. You know, I never understood what the Muslims used to say. But now, they give me some clarity about how they believe. Because the Quran says it. So yes. it's like, well, that's what we believe. So yes. even if the Quran says it, we can tell that it's not, a, it's not true. Up. Because the Quran says it, then it is true. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you and very then, much. And then they have the nerve. They mentioned evening, morning, evening. Then they have the nerve. Then they have the nerve to try to, 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 to say something to, to us. Right. As Jews, I'm going to bring out a few academics that, that have... That what the academics say about the Torah is what we believe about the Torah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's so uh, laughable. With all due respect. We, and we when Bob respect. does the same thing about the Quran, they laugh because it's so laughable. They, don't, they understand the Quran through the Hadith, not through academics, not to have problems. Josh, Josh, Josh. And Josh. we look at the Torah being the most powerful. That's the issue. It's a double, double standard. standard. Yeah. They yeah. do the yeah. straw man yeah. arguments and they don't look at other people's paradise. Thank you very much, Josh. 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 I've learned a lot to me. Okay. Thanks a lot. Josh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's Thanks okay. Anyway, um, okay, this is what I think, right? I think personally that you haven't responded to what I've asked you, right? And I'll tell you why I feel that you haven't responded, right? Now, I mentioned to you that God created the effect of light on the first day, right? And then he created the cause of light on the fourth day, right? Also, if you look further down, it says that God's created a, an, an, an advanced vegetable kingdom. It says here, right? Uh, bear with me. It, well, there you go. That's how I was going to cut out about that. Um, it's been a long time since I did the sound. Oh, come on, George. Um, it's, uh, sorry, oh, that's where the sun takes. Um, no, the plants use sunlight as um, as nutrition. No. Okay. Okay. Is that how it works? Kind of. It's a nice touch. No. Focus I'm pretty sure that's what it is. The plants are using how the sun. How does vegetation sunlight. grow? The plants take the sunlight and use it as a nutrient. Yeah, yeah. And what did the brother just mention here? What did he say? You're not, you're not paying attention. Look, you accuse me, I'm not. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 let me read it. Hold on. Can you read it? I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It says, and, hold on one second. It said, and God said, let the waters under the heaven. Even the same God as the Christians. Oh, oh, hold on. No, no. One, one second. One second, one second. 
and God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God did, God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seeds. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruits trees bearing fruit in which their seed each according to its kind upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seed according to their own kind so the question is how does photosynthesis work because god didn't create the the, the sun until the fourth day so the creation of the sun wasn't in existence Correct. so how is it possible for god to create an advanced vegetable kingdom when the creation of the sun and, and the moon was in, even in existence. So can you please explain that? If you're unable to explain it through the Torah, fine. If you can give me an external source that can explain this, as you said that you have like some type of tafsir, go ahead. Okay, first of all, the Torah is not a physics textbook. The Torah is not here to tell us physics. The Torah is here to tell us the order of creation. That God first put the seeds into the ground. First, God created the the mechanism for the vegetable um, cycle, vegetation cycle to work, and only after it's created the means for those then to grow does not, in fact, contradict. That God put in first the seeds and the 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 basis for the plants. He created that first, right? The earth brings it forth. And then, only then, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? And now photosynthesis can take, you know, will, will eventually take place, and the plants will, 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 will actually start to grow, because that's how it works. Okay, but the, the creation of the sun wasn't in existence, so how, no, how do you... The sun is afterwards, so until exactly then it doesn't point. grow. Sorry? Until then it won't grow. That's exactly the point you're making. Okay, but that's exactly the point you're making. It doesn't, say, exactly it doesn't say it grew on the third day. It says the earth brought it forth. There's a difference. Yeah, but how do you bring something forth without exactly. the sun? Without the sun, correct. In order for plants to grow, it needs the sun for photosynthesis. In fact, if we look at if we look at the definition of photosynthesis, it says photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that, through cellular res respiration, can later be released to fuel the organism activity. So, therefore, you would need light, right, in order for the sun for for the plants or the, this advanced vegetable kingdom to come into existence. Existence. So, you you haven't really explained to me logically, neither scientifically, how is it possible for the sun, because the sun was didn't come until the fourth day, but then we have an advanced vegetable kingdom the, a day before. So, it's still I don't think your answer really gave any sort of logical, coherent answer. I'll tell you something first. I'm not a scientist. I don't understand science. Right. I only just kind of know the basic idea of photosynthesis. So the plant is getting nutrients from sunlight, right? But now, I don't know exactly how that works, and maybe you know more than, hopefully you know a lot more about this than I do. It sounds like you do. Um, no. So what I'm not going to comment on science. All I know is that the Torah is not a physics textbook. The point of the, what the Torah is saying is not to necessarily is not necessarily to tell you how photosynthesis works. It's not necessarily to tell you that it's possible for a plant to grow without light. It's telling us the order of creation and various other secrets as well, right? That you're not necessarily going to understand that God gave us a book which isn't a physics textbook is something you'll have to work out in your own time. Creation is part of the physics. No, but no, but no, but what I'm saying, no, I agree. No, he's right. It's not the the, the Torah is not. A science book. I get that. I totally agree because the Quran, we can argue the same with the Quran. It's not a science book. However, when it comes to the creation of God, it should be in chronological order. Exactly. If we see something that's sort of like out of context, so to speak, then this book needs to be questioned as to its validity. And that's all that's all we're doing. And that's the reason why I would then claim, I would then postulate that it's not the word of God, because then why would God make such mistakes? Just like with the conversation we were having last week about ha God having regret, you know, God losing the wrestling match and things like this. Like, why would you have a God that seems to be having these sort of uh, things that are ungodly, so to speak? I mean, number one, I already explained to you the wrestling and the regretting. 
And the fact that I'm not currently able to explain the scientific stuff is simply because I don't understand science and I haven't really looked into this, right? The point I'm making is, the point I was making before, is that you will find, if you look in the Torah Shabbat out there, in the oral Torah, you'll see that there are answers in terms of chronological issues, in terms of what looks like differences in numbers between like Samuel and Chronicles and Kings and Chronicles. You'll see that, there's, that, that we have resolutions um, in the oral Torah to the anthropomorphisms that don't seem to make much sense, um, to, uh, to, to, to all sorts of things, like right? grammatical issues. I mean, if you knew Hebrew um, as, as, well as, as well as I do, then you, you would be able to get much be better questions than you're, than you're making now. I, okay. I can assure you. You could, you could be making questions in the first verse of the Torah, all the way till the last, on every single verse, and on almost every single word. And the fact that you can't do that is simply because of ignorance of the Hebrew language, and that's actually part of why there must be an oral Torah, what if there's a problem, if there is a premise that there is indeed a written Torah. Um, but that's besides the point. <coughs> okay, look. The point look. is yeah. that that God put all of these things in the Torah in order to teach us things. And those things are brought out in the Old Torah. And that's what the Torah is. The Torah is not a textbook. It's not a history book. It's a godly book. And you don't have any other books um, you could call godly, unless, of course, you hold the Quran, um, that, um, that, that you could be compare it to in order to say, oh, well, this is what I'm expecting. In a good, in, in a godly book, is it? Like when we're looking at a history book, we know what to compare to. We can compare it to other history books and see is this a history book as well? Because these other books are also history books. We don't have that with a godly book. We don't have that, right? You believe the only godly book currently in existence is the Quran. I believe the only godly books currently in existence are the Tanakh and the Torah out there. The Christians believe all there is is the Bible, right? No, we 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 agree that you know we no, believe we have corrupted. You don't. Know, there's so many religions in the world today. How do you know which one is true? You should have tried here to define which one is true. In the Quran, in the Quran, God said, "If the Quran has been from other than God, in it you find many contradictions, discrepancies." Yeah. So does your okay? So does the Torah have a similar criteria where it says if it's if it's anyone other than God? So if the author is other than God, then you will find discrepancies, contradictions. Yeah. What sort of falsification test do you have to determine that this is actually God's words? Like we can bring forward legitimate arguments from the Quran to demonstrate that it is God's words. Like we can bring up uh, subjects of oceanography, for example. We can. Bring Bring up uh, the, the, the the subject of embryology. We can bring up uh, the, 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 the yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. This, I I feel that there's absolutely. I don't believe God would be ignorant about His own creation. None of us believe that God is ignorant about his creation. Yeah, none of us believe. None of us believe that. Right? Whether you believe in the Torah, the Quran, or the New Testament, no one here believes that God makes mistakes. None of us believe that God is ignorant. Right? None of us believe that. I'm going to the scripture. I'm going to the scripture. It postulates. Now, you, na, na, now you may look at a piece of scripture and say, this looks like that. But without looking, but, but, but when the people who believe in that scripture say there's an oral thing that goes alongside it, why wouldn't you look to that as well? What's the oral do? What's the oral? What is the oral Torah? Yeah. The oral Torah has been, has been codified in a number of different collections. Um, there's, for example, there's the Midrashim. There's the uh, there's the Talgum, there's the Talmud, two Talmuds, there's the Mishnah, there's the Tosefta. There's a number of different codifications of Oral Torah. Um, so if you look in Oral Torah, you find oh, what do you mean by codification? So the Oral Torah was a very much a, a very much a living, a very much a very a living tradition. It was passed down orally um, teacher to student, okay. and so and from court to court, and so it, and so they when they were putting all of this when they were putting all of this into writing, they put it in different different codified books. But it wasn't just one big book; they put it in lots of different books. So can I ask you? So what's what's your? I mean, I, I know this question was asked before, but I'm going to reiterate it. I mean, okay, fair enough. You may not know the answer to um, 
the question of the science of the, the, uh, what, I, what I brought up, fine, fair enough. We'll just leave that to a side, okay? Maybe that's something that you can look into. But when it comes to like the Quran, for example, I mean, like for example, the Quran speaks about the universe expanding, for example. This is just one out of many um, examples of the Quran where it's, it has some scientific evidence to demonstrate that it is the, actually the word of the creator himself. Now, the universe, okay, that's just one example, but the universe expanding was was uh, was was an argument that was found in 1952 when Edwin Hubble, the American astronomer, he realized that that when he was looking through his telescope, he realized that the the uh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, 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 Josh, sorry. Anyway, that's what I was saying. What's he saying? Edwin Hubble, Edwin Hubble, the American astronomer, when he was looking through his telescope, he realized that the constellations and the nebula, the celestial bodies were moving away from each other. And this was only actually found in 1952. This, was dis this discovery was in 1952. However, 1,400 years ago, right, the Quran makes that prediction that the universe is expanding, right? And if you want references, we can produce the references for that. Yep, yep. Have you not seen that we've created the heavens and earth and surely we are expanding it? So, the, you know, the Quran is very specific and says that the universe is expanding, which is actually quite amazing because um, even if we look at academics, like for example, according to the Russian physicist uh, Alexander Friedman and the Belgian cosmologist George Lemaitre, they both theoretically calculated that the universe was in constant motion. And they agree that the universe is expanding, right? So this is academically found and proven that the universe is expanding. Yet the Quran mentioned this 1,400 years ago. Stephen so Hawking said it is the greatest scientific discovery of the century. Well, this is what Hawking says. So why would you reject the Quran when it's in full compliance to the worship of God? And of course, you believe in the worship of... Obviously, you're not a Christian. Just like us, you don't believe in a triune God. We don't believe in a triune God, right? You believe that God is the only Hashem that you believe in. You believe that He is the only being worthy of worship. We believe that Allah is only worthy of worship. We accept that Jesus is the Prophet. And obviously, this is where we may part ways, right, in your belief. But we believe that Jesus is the messenger of God. And we don't believe, right, that the Messiah, the, Mas the Mashiach that you believe in, or the Messiah that we believe in, we don't believe that he can die a, uh, a death of someone who's cursed. Because we know in Deuteronomy chapter 20, it says whoever is hanged on a, on a cross, uh, so hanged on a tree, is a curse of God. And we don't believe that Jesus Christ was crucified because we know that will make him a false prophet. Do you, would you agree to that? And that's part of what Precisely. Precisely. I agree with you. There are many other things. I, yes, I know. Amongst other things, obviously, if you read the, the, um, the, uh, the, the Talmud, obviously it has a description of, I, I don't know, it did some really, think, some serious stuff I read in there about Jesus. <laughs> it but, doesn't actually talk about Jesus, by the way. Just, just, to let, just putting it out there, there was more than one Yeshu at the time of Hazar. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Like, okay, fine. Yeshua was a very common name. Yes. In the okay, Christ. fair enough, right? Um, so, so, what's the same? Yeah, so. You're basically telling me all the creeds of Islam. That's basically what you're doing. Yeah, the creeds of Islam, but which you believe in yourself, like the oneness of God, you know? So, why would you, why would you object to something that we both unanimously agree on? Apart from just a few things, a few alterations in beliefs, which I can completely accept, but why would you reject Muhammad as a prophet of God when we don't believe, as, we, as I said before, that Jesus died on the cross because that makes him a false prophet, right? We believe that God has risen him. In, in fact, in Psalm chapter 91, it says that Yeshua, that God will protect him and that God will save him from the punishment of the of the pestilence. That's not the word that you Psalm chapter 91, verse 1. Now, I know you might have an explanation to that, but... What's your take on that? That's very, very funny. Ninety-one verse what? Nine. Okay, I'll bring it out. Hold on. I'll bring it out. You are familiar with Psalms ninety-one, right? It's one of the bedtime psalms. Like one of the psalms we say every night. 
Uh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> right, it says, He who dwells in the shell. By the way, before I read this, right? Um, it doesn't mention your shoe anyway. It doesn't mention Yeshua in the entire sound. I didn't think it did, so I had to go through come, it. Come it doesn't mention Yeshua. Oh, <laughs> like your wife wants to be on that sound. <laughs> no. Anyway. It doesn't mention Yeshua the entire sound. Um, okay, uh, it says, I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With the long life, I will satisfy him and show him my Yeshua, my salvation. So it does say the Hebrew word Yahushua is used here. Are you saying it? Oh, you remember the last verse? Yeah. Oh, must be but I be sure I'll see in my salvation. Yeah, my salvation. Yeah, sure. Like person. Okay. Be sure I'll see in my salvation. It's just a word. No, no the reason why, okay. The reason why, does it say Yahashua though? No. What does it say? Yahashua Hasi. No, Yahashua Hasi. Yahashua Hasi. Okay. Yahashua Hasi. Okay. Well, same root, but different word. My salvation. Okay, fine. Right. I'm talking about a person. Okay, well, don't there, there are some. Please, don't okay. Be don't, don't do a missionary on me. What, we'll do what on you? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, no, I'm, listen, I'm not Christian, so I'm not going to do any. Uh, I'm not, not, not going to do any. I mean, you just did. You just did. <laughs> no, I, I can't believe it. I've never heard that from, from, a, from a Muslim before. No, um, okay, Prof strange. Professor Bart Ehrman, Professor Bart Ehrman, he states in Psalm chapter 91, verse 16, yeah. that this is talking about Yahashua, which is actually Christ. Now, obviously, you, you don't have to share, look, hear me out, you don't have to share that opinion, that's fine. Um, obviously, we, we can agree to disagree on that, but academics have mentioned that this is speaking about Jesus. Now, that, do they, they happen to be Christian? No, uh, no, I mean, isn't Bart Christian. Elman's not a Christian. No, no. he's just Christian he scholar. No, he's not even a Christian. No, he knows not a Christian. No, he left but, but he's a, he left Christianity. Yeah. And when but, he said that he was a Christian, irrespective, he's, Wait, he's hold on, hold on. Uh, Are you telling me that an atheist? Hang on, that would contradict. <laughs> that would contradict the doctrine of Christianity because they believe Jesus died. Hold on. So, are you what's telling me? Are you telling me that there's an atheist who believes? That one of the Psalms is talking about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But that's what most Christians do anyway. And he's a biblical, he's a biblical but scholar an atheist as well. Atheist believes that one of the Psalms is about Jesus. He's not just an atheist. He's a biblical scholar. He's a biblical scholar. All yeah. biblical, the vast majority of biblical scholars are atheists. Yeah, yeah. Do you not know? That? And so are Jews and Christians and Muslims. What, the vast majority of Jews, Christians, and Muslims are atheists. I don't, no, I'm saying amongst the academics, it's not just the atheists. Bible critics. The Bible critics are all atheists. You're saying all atheists? Yeah, they all are. Really? Maybe a, maybe a, Keith, a, a religious... Dr. Keith Wood. Is he religious? Yeah, he's a biblical scholar. Is he religious? Why does that matter? Because of premises. If you are an atheist, if you are an atheist, you're going to have certain premises that a religious person will not have. If you're a Jewish scholar, yeah, there could be bias. What's your point? No. If you are a... <laughs> okay. Forget Jewish or not Jewish. If you're religious or you're not religious, if you believe there is a God, then you are going to approach Bible criticism very differently to if you believe there is no God. Do you know the difference between academic circles and belief and theology? Do you know the difference? Yes. Academics will not bother to state the premise that they don't actually believe that God could possibly have written a book. Exactly. Correct. Okay, so is he making an argument from a religious perspective or from an academic perspective? An academic, which is also thank you very much. So they don't believe in God. No, no, hang I on. Don't, it, don't, you just undermines your own argument. Josh, 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 you just made the distinction between academic circles yes. and theology. Yes. Okay, the brother here gave you an academic scholar by the name of Dr. Bart Ehrman. Yes. Okay. He's not a believer in God. Okay. Okay. He's an atheist. Yeah. 
What has his belief got to do with his? Because, because, much of the Bible. because you can't I'm fight saying, lies. I'm saying that it doesn't make sense that an atheist would say that one of the Psalms was written many years before Jesus. Oh, maybe he believes it was written later. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll go with that. That he believes the psalm was written after Jesus, and therefore he believes it was written about Jesus. Maybe he said that. Historians, but, historians would only construct what people claim to be so, not supernatural experience that Jesus, you know, was resurrected. That's something that historians are not interested in. Historians are, are only interested as to who this may be referring to. Why this is what this is what they say. Well, I don't really understand. Okay, why this, would somebody look at Psalm ninety-one and think it's talking about a person? Because it says Yeshua. Well, not not, not only no. It says the words Yeshua. Do you know what the word Yeshua means? Okay. Salvation. Wait, salvation. hold on. Yes. So, and what's the name of Jesus? In Hebrew, Yeshua. in Hebrew, can you not use the word salvation without it referring to Jesus? You can. You can. So why can't it here? You Wait, can. Hold on a minute. The reason why I use Psalms ninety-one, right, is because we know. Obviously, you don't believe in the New Testament. So I'm just going to quote some New Testament uh, uh, verses to demonstrate why I use Psalms chapter 91, right? Now, we know that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying to God to be saved, right? And he was... Sorry? You know that's how exactly? When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, are you not aware that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was asking God to be saved from the crucifixion? Take this cup away from me. Yeah, yeah. take this cup away from me. Not, that, not your... Not, my, my will, will but your, your will be done. Right? According to the gospel. Yeah, according, according to, to the gospel, gospel, gospel yes. Because right, yeah. the way you said it was as if it was like a factual event. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm summarizing what it says. I'm not exactly verbatim. I'm just summarizing. But are you aware of what I was saying? The right. verse. Right. So what I'm saying to you, right, is that Jesus was asking God to be saved from crucifixion. So the reason why I'm yeah. bringing up Psalm chapter 90, chapter 90, right? 91. Sorry, 91. Because it says here, and I'll read it. Uh, actually, do you know what? I need to go to um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. Because this, actually, this will make it make more sense. Rather than, uh, let me go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. And uh, you'll get a better understanding. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. Right, it says here, Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself from, uh, throw yourself, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will give you his angels charge over you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest, your, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Now, if you go to Psalm chapter 91, Let's go back to Psalms. Was it Psalm 91 I said or Psalms? Yeah, Psalms 91, yeah. yeah. 91 is here. Yeah, so I've got to browse. Yeah, no, I'll say that. Half an hour. Right, it says, so with what I read just now, right? Jesus was praying to not die on the cross, right? And I quoted Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. So we believe that Jesus, he was a servant of God and he dwelt um, in the shelter of the Most High, right? Who abides in the shadow of the Almighty will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler oh, yeah. and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his, with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that fouls by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at the noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge. So we believe that Jesus was a messenger of God and he sought refuge in the creator, right? The most high your habitation. No evil shall befall you, no scourge came near your tent. For he will give his angels charge of you. This is Matthew chapter 4 verse 5. To guard you in all his ways, and in their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. This is in reference to Matthew chapter 4 verse 5. 
Can't it be the other way around? Because Matthew is over to the psalm. So the psalm over to Matthew. So, no, what? The psalm king first. No, what I'm saying is that Matthew is quoting from Psalms chapter 91. Oh, that's fine. Right, so that's what I'm saying. That's so, what I'm saying. so to us, you were saying that the psalm was talking about Jesus. Now you're saying that Matthew no, Matthew is, is no, Matthew is referring Psalms 91 uh, to, to Jesus. Jesus. Why didn't you say that? That's what I said. Word. You did it. What did I say? You said the psalm is talking about Jesus. I did say that, but he's backing uh, but it from in, the New but, Testament. But in, exactly, I am referencing it to Matthew chapter four, verse five. So I think you need but to. If Matthew quotes, don't worry, it's easily misunderstood. It's fine. We will clarify it. We clarify it. We clarify it. Makes sense. Good. Look, the point I'm trying to raise here, right, is that we believe that Jesus is a, is is was protected by God, and he wasn't. Um, he wasn't crucified, and so therefore, and so therefore, that makes that proves to us as Muslims. Because you, you affirm that you're crucified. What do you mean? We're going to go soon. Hmm? You're going to go. Yeah, I'm going to pray. Yeah. Yeah. pray awesome. You're saying, right? Hmm? You're saying? Yeah, I'm staying after yeah. Mother. Uh, but I'm going to leave at 6. Yeah, that's fair enough. There were, there were a number of different issues Josh in the first in the this is what they do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, sorry Josh <laughs> sorry could you, you you can have a discussion with him separately no problem what 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 the brother is trying to do here we're trying to use internal evidences from the gospels to prove to you that Jesus was not crucified. I don't that care. He wasn't killed. But that's the point. That's I, what I, personally that, that's what we're making. Personally, I couldn't care less if Jesus was crucified or just died next. Of course you do. It doesn't care. make a difference to me. Of course you care. Why? Because you believe Jesus was a false Messiah? Yes, but it's irrelevant. Why is he irrelevant? Because none of the Messianic prophecies were fulfilled. I mean, no, but he's, means, no, no, no. It doesn't matter to me how he died. No, 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 no. See, Whether he was killed or he just died naturally. So, so, even, if, so even if Jesus did not die, you still reject him? When he did die. No, no, no. no. See, that's the reason. So it is relevant. Yeah, it is. Because if Jesus didn't die the death he died, would you believe in him? Yeah, would you believe in him? If God raised him, if God raised him, like Elisha, when, prophet, when God raised Elisha, to the heavens, right? No, that's, that's Eliyahu. Pardon? Eliyahu, not Elisha. Eliyahu, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Eliyahu. You know what, my Hebrew is not that great, but you know what, thank you for the correction. But Eliyahu, God raised him, right? So if God raised Jesus and protected him, would you believe in him? Um, as, the, as the Messiah? Um, depends what he says. Depends what he says. If he says things that contradict the Torah, then I, then, then, then I can't believe in him. But Jesus never claimed to be divine in any of the four Gospels. You know, that's he, not says, he says that he's a prophet. Because this is I what the Jews hope, claimed. I really hope, I really, really hope you don't think that that's the only condition in... Um, in what the what? What's up? Crazy people. I wonder what it is. You know what it is? Did we no. say it's the only condition? We didn't because, say that. Because, no, but because, because by what, because what you said was, when I said it depends whether or not he contradicted, you immediately said, well, he never said he was divine, right? Well, that's not the only thing. So I don't know why you would bring that up. But do you believe Jesus claimed to be God? You don't know that yet. Don't what, know that hang, yet. hang on, hang on. So what was your... What was your assessment that led you to believe that Jesus was false Messiah? Just because your rabbi said so? No, no, to pick up the uh, sound. Oh, the very fact that none of the messianic... It just picks up the sound. The very fact that we're not in the messianic age means that the Messiah has not come. Which means that if he claimed to be the Messiah, which apparently he did, because the Christians told us that he claimed okay. to be the Messiah, but then he must be a false Messiah. It's, it's a simple... And what would that be messianic age look like? The messianic age will have world peace, Okay. Um, nature will be flipped on its head uh -huh. because the lamb will lie with the lion, etc. We'll have the third temple in Jerusalem. We will. Um, there, there will be universal, as in totally universal knowledge of one God. Right, totally universal. Right, I think Hindus are Trinitarians or okay. people believe that God has central attributes. Any of that kind of stuff. No. Okay. Um, to total monotheism of that whole world. Everyone will 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 flock towards Jerusalem to worship God. Right? Everyone who to to the Western That will be during Messianic times. But well, that's happened. Mm. The okay. things it has, they're, they're very delusional. Okay, fine. Fair enough. If that's your if that's your reason why you believe Jesus was crucified, then that's absolutely fine. No problem. No problem. But what we do, what we are saying to you is that 
the re one of the reasons why you do reject Jesus as the Messiah because first of all you believe that he was a legitimate child, correct? Um, you I, mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you in are. your Talmud, in your Talmud, Talmud doesn't talk about that. The Talmud the mentions that Mary slept with Roman soldiers. Do you know that? No. The, 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 the Torah talks about a person called Miriam. Again, Miriam is a common name today, and it was a common name then as well. Okay. It was not that Miriam. It can't be. It's 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 the wrong time, wrong time frame. Okay, but then do you believe? Yeah, but do you believe the Talmud does speak about Jesus, who claims to be the Messiah? No, it doesn't talk about anyone claims to be the Messiah. So it, it, it does. It does talk about a Yeshu um, who, um, who 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 went and bowed down to a to a brick. Okay, so, okay, hang on. Are are you rejecting the same Jesus that we are, we believe to be the Messiah? I don't know who who you say so Jesus was. So if you don't I, know who Jesus I, is, how can you reject him? Well, look. Mushroom. Look, the Jesus that the Christians talk about right, is the Jesus that I've heard about. Right, right, but we're not, but we're not, but we don't subscribe to the Pauline understanding of Jesus. Not, not understanding as who the person was, right? As in, like a guy who lived there. I mean, did he do anything what? interesting? Well, no. What the what the Talmud say exactly is you believe that you stoned Jesus to death. And you hung him. You hung him on the cross, correct? No, Yeshu, on the, not on the Jesus, pole. a different person. Yeshu, okay, no problem. Lives Yeshu, time, is that is that the Yeshu that you reject? Our understanding Yeshu is that who you reject? We, we do reject him, but not as the Mashiach, because he didn't claim to be the Mashiach. He didn't claim to be the Mashiach. Yeah, that's not what it says in the where Talmud. You, okay, so when in the Talmud it says about this particular Yeshu, why did you stone him? He committed idolatry and he incited people to idolatry, idolatry and he did sorcery as well. Where's your historical Where, evidence? Where's your proof that Jesus proof? Um, We're not committed. talking about Jesus. I'm just talking about the Yeshu that the yeah, Talmud yeah. is talking about. Uh, but, but the Yeshu that you are rejecting, is that who... Is that is that, is that the Yeshu? Is that Esau? No. Is that Esau? No. No, so you don't actually reject Esau? We don't know who he is. The only people who ever told about Esau are you guys. And the only reason you believe in him is because Lahama talks about it. Well, hang on, but then you, but then you say that you reject, uh, you reject uh, Isa. No, I say I reject Jesus. So you're agnostic when it comes to Isa. I mean, I don't care about Isa. All I know about Isa is that Muhammad talked about him. And you guys say that Isa was Jesus. Joshua, you claim that... Hang on, hang on. So hold on, can I ask you... I'm really confused. Wait, wait, hold on. So our description of Jesus, do you reject our description? Now, our description yeah. of Jesus is as follows, right? That he did not bow down to pagan gods. He yeah. didn't worship uh, the brick, as you said just now um, that he was sent to the children of Israel according to the Quran and he was the messenger of God and he wasn't he never claimed to be God he never claimed to be the son of God do you reject that specific type of uh, the Jesus that we believe in do you reject that do you reject now, that? I get the fact that you reject Jesus in the New Testament because obviously right. you claim the Jews claim that he claimed divinity which we don't believe in yeah right but the Jesus that we believe in do you reject that Jesus I mean, it, it depends who... Hold on a second. So, the Jesus that you're talking about was a person who lived... When exactly? Well, you see, the thing is, right? More than 2,000 years ago. Yeah, more than 2,000 yeah, years ago. So the Jesus that the Christians claim that they they don't... They, the Christians reject our Jesus, right? Which we don't even believe that Jesus claimed to be God. So and no Muslim... believe that their Jesus ever existed? Absolutely, no, we affirm that Jesus did exist, but what we do negate... Are these two different people or is it the same guy? No, 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 we're talking about... No, 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 that's a very good point you made, Josh, Josh, that's a guy. Josh, that's a very good point you made, that's a very good point you made, and it's a very valid question, right? We do not accept the Pauline understanding of that same individual. Oh, it's the same individual? Yeah, same individual, but they have a different understanding of Jesus. So we reject their understanding of Jesus. I said the Talmud is talking about a different guy when he talks about Yeshu. I'm talking about literally a different guy. Uh, and no, 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 we don't, the same no, no, guy. no, we don't believe in that. the same individual. No, no. He's a different, he, he lived in a different time frame. Good. He's Good. A, a different person altogether. Good. Right? That's, what I'm, that's what I meant. But the Quran is here to refute the misunderstanding that the Christians had on Jesus. To remove the misunderstanding. Yeah? So if that is the, if that's the kind of understanding of Jesus, from an Islamic paradigm, from an Islamic perspective, would you call him? A, would you reject him as a Messiah? Did he claim to be the Messiah? Yes, he did. In the Quran, it does. Yes. Okay. okay. Have to does Messiah? Does well. Messiah? Does Messiah necessarily need to claim he's the king, or can Messiah also be a prophet and a priest? 
Well, it depends. He can only be a priest if he is if he is a, a direct descendant of Aaron through the father line. Okay. And um, of course, you don't believe he had a father, so that okay. doesn't work. What about the um, he could, um, I mean, I suppose if he had made, if he never contributed to the Torah, and Very good. he um, and he um, he didn't make false predictions, and he wasn't too late. And I suppose he could have been a prophet, but he wasn't too late. So, and we don't really know anything he said. Yeah. All we have is your word. For it, that's what he said. We have for it. No problem. Um, and of course, we know that Muhammad did contribute to us. That doesn't help us. Um, and then, and then, um, and then Messiah. Well, he's not done anything, so not the Messiah either. And even according to your statement, he didn't have a father. Well, to be a Messiah, you need to be a direct descendant through the father line from King David to King Solomon. It doesn't work either. So. Okay, fine. But I didn't ask you about the. The lineage of David. I mean, I'm not asking about yeah, that because they're important right, to whether he's a priest. But or there's messiah. different. But there's different messiahs, correct? Messiah, Cyrus, King Cyrus, was he was he the messiah in Isaiah 45 verse one? He's not the messiah. He's a messiah. Correct. So can there be? So what you're talking about is a different messiah. Oh, we're talking about the, the Messiah who claims to be the prophet. Prophet of God. That's that's who do we a, believe. Do you have a problem with that? The Messiah who claims to be a prophet. Of course. I don't understand what you mean. Okay. Is okay. Messiah can be referred to three different types of people. Either they're prophet, either they're a king or a priest. The Messiah that you're talking about is a is a Messiah who claims to be the king of the Jews. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, we say that Jesus was not the king, he was a prophet. So, so the Messiah does not necessarily need to claim to be the king, because the Messiah could also be a prophet. Okay, and what kind of stuff did he say? Right, so this is where the, this this is where, this is where the Quranic injunction comes, you know, because Jesus in, in the Quran, and the reason, there's no point to quote in the New Testament, because obviously the because Jews... You don't believe in that guy, you believe in this guy. Well, well, there's no point because the Jews accuse Jesus of blaspheming God, and we don't believe that the Messiah will ever blaspheme the Creator, you know, in fact... Why well, can't you just call him a prophet, so the Messiah? It's a bit confusing. Okay, because, because for usually, you it might be... Because usually in semantics, when we're talking about the Messiah, we're talking about the Messiah. Right? We don't usually talk about King Cyrus as the Messiah, even though Isaiah does refer to him as, as a Messiah, right? as one of God's many Messiahs. Right? We're talking about the Messiah, we're talking about specifically the Messiah, son of David, who is going to be the king and the redeemer. Right? That, that's who we're talking about when we say Messiah, right? the Messiah. Right? Okay. So you could say a Messiah, it's much more easy to just call him a prophet. Okay, no problem, a Messiah. No problem, a Messiah. So do you have an issue with that from the Islamic uh, understanding of Jesus? Do you have a problem that he was, that he was a Messiah? I think I understand it. Yeah. Well, obviously not. Yeah. Fantastic. It's from the Islamic understanding. Fantastic. Of prophets. Fantastic. That's in the Islamic understanding. That's the Islam. That, exactly. exactly. But would you? But, 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 but yes, I know. But no, would but you, you reject? Would but, you reject? Would you reject uh, the, the, the the Jesus or the Messiah that we believe in? Yes. That he believes that God is one. That God knows has has no associates because we believe that the Quran. That's what the Quran says. That Jesus did not claim to be God. He never claimed to be the um, the son of God. He claimed to be the messenger of God sent to the Jews. And we don't believe that Jesus broke the, uh, the, the Ten Commandments. We don't believe that Jesus broke the law. He came to fulfill the law. According to, obviously, you don't believe in the New Testament, but we believe... Like, for example, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, you know, you shall have no other God before me, you know, that he worshipped the creator in all his glory. He didn't associate partners with God. Jesus didn't I mean, bear... You said that, but you said he didn't... You said he didn't come to bring the law, he had to fulfill it. What do you mean when he says, when you say fulfill? To, to, to keep the commandments. So he kept the Sabbath, he kept kosher. Can't you the Mosaic law, yes? Okay, no problem. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. The question that needs to be asked really is, you're asking about Jesus, am I right? Yeah, well, that's what we're okay. speaking about. Yeah. So, do you even believe in Jesus? Because from what I understand, the Jewish people go under the Talmud, Babylonian Talmud. Oh, you don't go by. You only go by Old Testament. You don't go by the New. You don't go by the New Testament. Now Jesus came under the New Testament. So if he doesn't go by the New Testament, then you can't even ask him about Jesus because they don't believe in Jesus. Hold on, sister. Are you Christian or Muslim? I'm a. I'm Christian. 
Israelite. I'm an Israelite. You're a Hebrew Israelite. Israelite yeah. Oh, okay, I, I see. Israelite. You're a Hebrew Israelite. But I okay. do understand that they don't go by. Yeah. So, so, am I correct or am I right or wrong? You are correct, that you are correct. Okay. That. But they're not coming from a Christian perspective. Exactly. Either. Yeah. They're exactly. actually Muslims. Yeah, but and they're, they're actually, asking you a question I know, that you can't I know, really. But they're talking about a different Jesus. Exactly. They're talking about the Muslim yeah. Jesus, not the Christian Jesus. Is there two exactly. Jesus? Yeah, apparently. Sorry? So. Is there two Jesus? Apparently so. There's Sorry, a, what do you mean? Like, I thought there's, there's only Christian one Jesus. Jesus. No, 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 no. We never no, said no, that. Really? No, they're going under the same Jesus that I'm going under. No, they're talking about a totally different guy. No, I don't believe in it. Hold on a minute. I, uh, sorry, we, we're getting we're getting across from your perspective. Yeah, two different Jesus. Yeah, from your perspective. Yeah. Oh, from my perspective, we, we the Quran came here to remove the allegations against Jesus. That's it. I think this is, she came late. That's that's the reason. She came late, so she's. And we don't believe Jesus came with a new covenant. Start preaching Trinity. We can speak to her. I'm happy to speak to the the Mosaic law. We we believe that Jesus came to tell the people to revive the mosaic teachings to go back to the old testament to go sorry to go back to the Torah. today we will talk, talk to you i don't know i ever heard of this guy before Muhammad came which is why the quran needed to be that's the reason why the quran was revealed to remove the misconceptions that the christians had in jesus has anyone ever heard of jesus before Muhammad came exactly okay has anyone heard about moses yeah historically yeah, historically we've always known about Moses. Can you give me any oh, historical mind. evidence? That Jews have known about Moses. Yeah. All right, sure. Okay, um, so what's your point? What's your point? I, I, don't, I don't see the point about the existence. No, no, of, no, I, I can scrutinize the existence of Moses if no, I want to. That, no, because the point I'm saying is that nobody is claiming that there's more than one Moses. Now that you, that now you guys are claiming there's more than one Jesus. Oh, sorry. At least it sounds like it. Maybe I've misunderstood. I, maybe I have misunderstood. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually very confused at this point. The reason why you're confused is because you're, you only understand Jesus according to the Pauline understanding. Okay? What I, we I don't can, I, Yeah, go on. I don't understand him according to any understanding. I simply see, I, what I've heard is there was a guy who had a name similar to Jesus, okay. who lived in Israel, um, maybe Bethlehem, maybe Lazarus, who knows, um, during the, the first century, right? He died whilst the second temple was still around, apparently. And apparently, the, the Romans got him, or maybe they didn't, or I mean, you guys are saying they didn't kill him, and they go, and they say they did kill him. Uh, Who's the Romans? Who are the Romans today? I don't know, it's irrelevant. You don't, it's, it's not totally irrelevant. I think it's irrelevant. Because yeah. the Bible says we need to know who the enemy of the earth is. So if we're saying it's irrelevant, it's not irrelevant at all. Because the Romans... Sorry, Josh. Is the subtext that you're going to accuse me of being an Edomite? I'm not accusing you of anything. Is that the subtext? Is that what you're I think that's what she's... I'm not going to accuse you of being a what? An Edomite. No, no, no. I don't think she is. I never said no, no, that. No, no, no. You said it. Do you know what? We'll speak saying, to this just in a second. Is that we'll the subtext? Because if it is... Sorry, Josh. I didn't say it. Because I know the Hebrew Israelite narrative. Because I've heard it before. That's right. That's right. Josh, Josh, what so we're saying to you... Is that not a valid question now? Is that not valid? Okay, I mean, we, it's, we, it's something which is totally irrelevant to the discussion. Okay, so Josh, well, just, that's, that's why yeah, I went just, into the subtext okay. to basically remove Josh, it from the conversation. Yeah. But, but based on but anyway, okay, go on. Um, you guys are saying the Romans killed him. They're saying no, the no, no, we did, no, 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 they say he's God, you say he's God. No, he's we're not saying he's not God. We're, we're not saying that he's God. No, I we, said they say he's they, God. They, exactly. You guys say so, he's so, God. so from the yeah. so Islamic God. understanding, I mean, do you have he was a carpenter like them? I don't believe Jesus ah, that's, God. that's irrelevant. If he's God, the most, me, impo did, did, the did, most did, important thing... Who was who his mother? Oh, no, we believe Maryam, Mary. Okay, and they also say Mary. Okay, okay fine. So at the moment, it, kind of, it's, it's, it sounds like it's the same guy. And then where did he live? Palestine. I know, where? Why is that relevant? Because I'm trying to ascertain who this guy was. Because... Are you talking about Jesus according to the Quran? Who, who, well, I don't, Josh, it's just Josh, a guy. Josh, it's Josh, just Josh, a guy. No, no, Josh, 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 Josh. Wait, Josh. What we're saying to you is this: the Jesus that we're talking about, according to Islam, do you have a problem with that understanding that he was a, a prophet, a messiah, who came to restore the mosaic teachings? Do you have any issue with that? I mean, I don't believe that he. That he was a prophet because we were never told about it. Okay, but you just said that it's a different Jesus. To who? You're talking about the Pauline understanding of Jesus. We reject that. But do no. you reject the Islamic understanding Look, of Jesus? I'd heard about that Jesus. Do you reject that? 
course I'd reject okay, that. But, but would you reject the Islamic understanding of Jesus? As a prophet? Yes. Yes. Why? Because I've, because I've never heard of the three prophets. Can you show me anywhere in the Quran where Jesus came to contradict the Mosaic teachings? Jesus came here to confirm the, 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 the oneness of God. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He came here. He didn't come here to con he didn't come here to contradict the mosaic teaching. Rather, he came here to correct the Israelites. The so very fact that they're not to keep the commandments. So, so, if that's really the case, then how come none of the rabbis at the time spoke about this new prophet? They spoke about lots of prophets before that. They spoke about about um, about Yeshua. They spoke about um, about Shmuel and Eli, and they spoke about David and Nosson and God and Shlomo and about Shemaya and Odeid and about Eliyahu and Elisha, Yeshaya and Hosea and Micha I could go on and on Amos and Avadia and Yona and Micha and Nachum and Yimya and Habakkuk and Spanya and, okay, and Chaya and Malachi and they never spoke about a Jesus guy so why, why did they not talk about him? If he's a prophet who never contradicted the Torah they would have mentioned him but we're saying he didn't contradict the Torah. So if he's a prophet that did not contradict the Torah, why did they not talk about him? That's that's your issue. That's not us. No, but it is. It is a bit of our. It, yeah. It's it is our so issue. are you? De hold on. Are you denying the existence of Jesus? I'm denying the existence of the Muslim Jesus because I've never heard no, of no, him. No, no. Hold on one second. No, hold on. Let me. Cl no, hold on. Let me clarify. Let me, maybe this might help. Right. We are not actually talking about two different Jesuses here. Just please, just understand my point. Hold on, bear with me. We're actually speaking about the same Jesus, but the difference is, right, is that the Jesus that the Christians believe in is that they believe that the, 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 that the Messiah, that Christ will be divine, right? Exactly. And that's the Christ you reject. And I, we both unanimously reject a divine Christ. Exactly. We don't believe in it because exactly. it's just like saying Moses is God. Right, and we, you know that Moses is not God because this is this is idol worship, Correct. right? So the, the the Jesus that Muslims believe in is the same Jesus that the Christians believe in, but the only unique difference between the two is that we accept Jesus as the prophet and the Messiah. He is the Messiah, and he is he was sent to the children of Israel, right? We do not accept him to be God, right? And that's the difference. That's that's the the sort of parting of ways between the Christians and the Muslims. We don't reject Jesus at all. So the Jesus that you were talking about, you've heard of him, but exactly. the, the, but the narrative that you have heard is that as what the Jews accuse him in the New Testament that he claimed to be God and we reject that because we, we don't believe that, that, that exactly. that's what Jesus preached Jesus never preached that he was the uh, uh, oneness he's one and uh, the triune God he, he, you know he didn't he never he spoke of this this was an accusation against the Jews that the Jews levied against Jesus however this was not something that Jesus affirmed. He never said, yes, I'm God. He never, he wasn't walking around 2000 years in Jerusalem and saying, exactly. hey, everyone, exactly. I'm God. Worship me, you know, you know, worship, hey, bow down to me, kiss exactly. my feet. None of that existed. We believe that Jesus is the, is the Messiah and that's the, the, uh, the Jesus that you have heard of. So we are speaking about the same Jesus, but the difference is, is that we don't accept him to be God and he never claimed to be God. He never claimed so to what, so, be so, so what I'm saying to you, right, why would you have an, an issue rejecting the, 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 the Islamic understanding of Christ when the, the, the understanding that we hold is that he was the Messiah, he preached that God was one, he never contradicted the laws of the Old Testament, right. he affirmed the Shema, Shema Israel, Edonai Elohinu, Edonai Achad. He affirmed the, uh, the, the Shema, he said that God is one, he never said that God has a partner, he never said that God is equal exactly. to himself. Exactly. Of course, I know you don't believe in the New Testament. No, I no, I, I said is that Jesus never claimed equality with the Creator. Correct. Uh, John chapter fourteen verse twenty. I know you don't believe in it, but John chapter fourteen verse twenty eight says that my Father is greater than I. Right. So Jesus always lowered himself to the Creator. So why would you have a, as a problem with the with the Muslim understanding of Christ when we are affirming that he was a messenger of God? So, so that's 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 my contention. And sorry, just one more thing. One more thing I want to say. Last thing I want to say is that we don't believe that Jesus died on the cross because we know that that will make Jesus a false prophet. Now I know I don't know what you believe, sister. I know I don't know what the Hebrew Israelites believe whether that Jesus died on the cross or not. But we as Muslims we reject this belief because if Jesus died on the cross, that will make him a false prophet. Correct. Why? Because first of all, it's not befitting for the Messiah to die in the way he did because that will make him a liar. 
because, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, chapter 21, it Verse says, 22, 23. Yeah. yeah, 22 to 23, it says, whoever dies, whoever dies, is 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 accursed by God. Okay, so wait, now we don't. Whoever we, is hanged. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whoever okay, whoever is hanged. So Jesus was Jesus was an Israelite. The Israelites were cursed according to Deuteronomy. Am I correct? Yes. So if Jesus was an Israelite and the Israelites were supposed to be cursed for a short time, would then he not be under the curse? Okay. So I was with the so I don't need to, to I don't want to divert. No but, but the thing is, the reason why as Muslims we don't reject that because we look at the early Christian community. Okay. The question is, who were the early Christian communities that existed in the first and second centuries? Century, we had the Mandians. Have you heard of the Mandians? Oh, yeah, Mandians, yeah. Right, the Mandians were oh, early the Christian Bible. sect. They were actually considered as Gnostics. Right, they did not believe that Jesus died on the cross. Right, but belief and emotions and what you think and I believe and I think and it might be not might be it wouldn't be right. Well, it was it actually mean, it was correct, it, it was it? actually no, predominant no, no, belief. No, 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 no. my sister, no. This was a belief that the Christian community held exactly. that Jesus, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross, Correct. right? In fact, they were using a totally different gospel to what you was using. They wasn't using Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Do you know what they were using? They were using the gospel of Thomas the Contender, right? I just heard of these people, so I can't No, no, no sister, I'm, <laughs> sister, I am sister, I am enlightening you, so this is something that you can research, right? They were using the, the Arabic Ditesseron. Right, the Diatessaron oh, yeah. was written by Titian. Right, they were using a completely different gospel. In fact, they were using. Okay, well, sister, you, you, this is something that you may need to research. Right, they were using the Papyrus Egerton too. This is a totally different gospel. I don't know who they are. No. You, you can have. So it's like we're here right now. I guarantee you there's about fifty different sects of religions right here. So you're telling me one out of the millions in the world that I need to be focusing on. I'm focusing on the Holy Bible, King James Version. The Bible was not even... The, the Bible was when not was even... When was that? The, 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 the Quran was no, after the Bible. No, no? hang on. Uh, what's so the Quran? Got, no, no, the Quran no, has got nothing to do with the Bible. Muslim, right? Yeah, I'm a Muslim, okay, yes. so yes. then you're saying that the Bible before this... So if you're going to go on dates, okay. then you also have to say the dates of the Quran too. Because the Quran came well, in after the Bible, okay. then you can't now say, oh, well, the Bible came in before this and this and that. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not using from the Quran. I'm using from your own early Christian community in the first century that denied the crucifixion of Jesus. I don't know that. And when was the Bible canonized? I'm not going to speak on it, I don't know. Fourth century. See, 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 this is what I'm saying, sister. So do we had Gospels that were completely... I don't understand why these you're These are confused. the writings. These I are the writings. Why. And they've all been put together in, into one book. So the writings have all been gathered and put together in one book. Ale. Yeah, but as Ale. Brother Hamza said, they were using different Gospels. You have the the second treatise of the Great Seth. Absolutely. And in that in that, uh, Actually, in that particular document, it. it mentions it. that the Simon of Cyrene was crucified instead of Jesus. I'll read it to you. And then you read in the Apocalypse of, of St. Peter, that Peter, that Jesus, the, the the actual Jesus, was actually laughing, and he was on the tree. Now, now, may, these, I, may I interview? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I can I can quote scriptures. I can, but I won't because I that's not what I do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Based on it's not. So I will listen, but I will not. I will quote scripture. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to quote you an extract, right, of the yeah. second treatise of Great Seth. Right. Yeah. I don't Again, know that is. Okay. So you can quote me whatever I will. you want to quote me because okay. there's millions of different quotes, billions, trillions of different quotes. So any man can say to me, let me quote you this, let me quote you that. That means God, that's the gospel. No, I go by what I go by. Okay. It's like me coming to you say, oh, you go by your book and I'm coming to you with another book. Oh, this is a quote from such a man. This is a quote from such a man. Go by this. No. So you, you go you by what you go by. I go by what I go by. I heard that. And we have to respect that. Yeah. No, I, look, I'm sister. I'm not here to like. I'm not no, here to argue. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to knock your beliefs. No, I'm not you know knocking I mean? yours because everybody really has know, their rights to their own. Beliefs. Absolutely. Like, so I can come with different books and say, okay, oh, no, no, no. Let's see the Quran, the this, the Quran, that, and this, and this, and this, and that, and I can go to him. And, about Jesus. But Do you have where does it end? You have your book. I have my book. I go by and I can read him. You can't now tell me about. I've never heard about. Listen to this, read this. So, this is what he said. Well, no, it doesn't, that doesn't make, it wouldn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But sister, the reason why I'm bringing up these uh, references, because this is something that maybe you can look into yourself. 
This is something that you could That's like me telling up. you to ignore your book and look into another book. No, no, I'm not telling you to ignore. Because then you get, like, your brain gets all like this. I believe in a book and I'm sticking on my book. Okay. And I don't need no other book. Do you have any problem? I don't need no other book. I don't need no other teachings. I've got my teachings. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bless and praise and great no book. I don't need to hear anything. No, that's okay. Sister. No problem. No, sister. No worries. No have you scrutinized the claim that Muhammad came independently? What? That God spoke to him? Yes. Um, I mean, lots of people say that God speaks to them. Can you, okay, if, if for example, even for the sake of argument, you're you are implementing or you are applying the criteria from the Torah. We're, we're talking now in a theoretical state, Theor in, in an alternative universe okay. in, which the, in which the mass revelation never happened and the Torah was never made. Okay, so can you prove to me Muhammad is a false prophet in that paradigm? I couldn't prove it. I would just decide whether or not to believe. It would all be a matter of faith then. So are you, so are you, telling, me that, are you telling me that Muhammad is a false prophet just because the Torah just because it doesn't fulfill the criteria from the Torah. Because it because it contradicts because it contradicts the Torah. Okay, when you say it contradicts the Torah, do you 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 use a, a a narrative from Surah Yusuf, correct? Yes. Okay, fine. But that's circular reasoning. Why? Because you first have to establish to me why is the Torah the word of God? But I already did that because wow. I explained mass revelation. But right now we're talking in an alternative reality in which mass revelation and the Torah never existed. Okay, fine, no problem. And, and you're asking me in that reality. So you are very confident. You are very confident from a one-man testimony that he's a false prophet. Now you have to prove to me. Was he lying? Right. So one man. So without the term, without Master of Christ, this right. alternative universe, yeah. would I believe Muhammad is a prophet or not? It depends how gullible I am. Okay, so have you assessed the claim that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with? That God spoke to him? Yes. Um, oh, through the angel game. Not, not to a great degree. Why not? Because it's okay, so maybe because in our timeline, mass revelation did happen, so I never needed to. Okay, fine, but then if you're so confident that it's Muhammad, like back to the future, but brilliant. hang on, hang on, if you're so confident that Muhammad is a false prophet, you wouldn't need the Torah. You can independently review his claim and prove to him he's a liar. Yes, but that's not what I ever claimed. I never claimed that him just by being is therefore a false prophet. No, what I was saying was in our timeline, the mass revelation happened. Therefore, we have the Torah. And if Muhammad contradicts it, therefore he's a false prophet. Yeah, but we confirm that was my argument all along. Yeah, but well, yeah, but Josh, Joshua, that was my argument all along. No problem. But irrespective whether there's mass revelation or not, we believe in Moses anyway. So I yeah, don't. But you know. only believe in him because of Muhammad. You believe. Ah, Muhammad so so okay, okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. So 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 do you have? So now. You can't back out because you, you can't back out now because we because we Muslims believe that Moses is the true prophet because Muhammad said so. So you believe in Moses? Only back out from what? Because, because I believe in Moses because of Muslim nation. I believe, and you in believe in Moses because of Muhammad. Okay, so do you have any issue with that? That you believe in Moses because of Muhammad? Yeah. No. Okay, well, so now exactly. What so kind of now, issue would I have? Exactly. That's the point I'm making. So now, can you independently prove to me that Muhammad? Like you do you. Like you do you. If you want to believe Moses because of Muhammad, just go ahead. Okay, but yeah, okay, but his. his but if Muhammad is false in his claim, exactly. if Prophet Muhammad is false in his claim, and yet he made it a part of our, our, our of our faith to believe in Moses, oh. right? Would you disprove? What I mean? Would you disprove that Prophet Muhammad is? I, I, I was miles away to say that again. Sorry. Okay, all right. So, sorry, sorry. So basically, right. We believe in Moses, right? And we believe in Jesus, right? So we believe that Moses is, is, is a prophet of God, right? Yeah. Because it is stated in the Quran, right? Yes. And you believe in him, isn't it? Yeah, and I believe so in him so, because of mass Right, okay. Yes. So if Muhammad is a false prophet, right? Yes. Um, and obviously I, I argued, okay, let, let me take this on another let me take this on another route, right? In the Quran, I've explained to you earlier, right, that the Quran speaks about so much uh, scientific miracles, right? Yeah. And the Quran speaks about embryology, for example. The Quran speaks about oceanography. The Quran speaks about various different uh, scientific miracles and of which has only been found out recently through 20th century technology, for example. And I mentioned to you earlier, like the expanding universe, for example. So, so uh, I, I, hold on one second. I would have to look through these different claims right, and actually analyze 
see whether or not. So I remember I once watched a very interesting debate between Mohammed Hijab and Bob about embryology. And for my own reasoning, I thought Bob did extremely well in that debate. And I'm not convinced, actually, that the Quran does in fact talk about embryology based on the debate that I watched. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I can only go on what okay, people I'll give are an example. more than I the am Quran says talking about with regards to science, whether or not the Quran actually does fulfill these types of things. So I'm, I'm not going to, just going to take a Muslim's word on it, or even the Quran's word on it, that, um, that they're saying this, right? I would actually look at them at the science if, I, if that was where I was going to go. But in our timeline, I don't need to do that. Because in our timeline, mass revelation did happen. And therefore, it's irrelevant to me whether okay, or not the science... Okay, but my Quran. question to you is this, right? Is that if the Quran makes a claim, right? For example, there's a verse in the Quran. I'll hold, I'll do. The Quran says that we have created man in three stages of darkness, right? Now, we know we have embryonic, pre-embryonic, and we have fetal, right? These are the three uh, embryonic, embryonic development in a mother's womb, right? Now, we know that Professor Keith L. Moore, right, in his book, The Principles of Zoology, page 55, he mentions, right, the three stages of that process, which is embryonic, pre-embryonic, and fetal. Right. So my question is, how did Prophet Muhammad, 1,400 years ago, know that the stages, the different stages of the embryonic development is three stages? Why did he not say four stages? Why did he not say five stages? Why was he specific in three stages? Right. So again, my question to you is, Josh, right, if, the, if Prophet Muhammad was a false prophet, right, and as I mentioned to you earlier, he speaks about the expanding universe, which we only found out recently, to, recently in 1952. How is it possible that Prophet Muhammad is receiving this information, right? And it's not coming from a divine source, right? This shows me as a logical thinking person that this is coming from a divine creator. It cannot be coming from any other source other than the creator himself. I think there are other options. There are other options. Okay, what other, other options? Sorcery. 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 Okay. So prove to me. Okay. So prove mm. to me that the Quran is from from. Uh, we're uh, getting there. That's fine. Prove no, to us. No, I don't. No, okay. I don't. That's not the burden of proof. I don't need to prove that it was sorcery. But all I need to say is that what you're saying is proof is not necessarily proof because there's an alternative way of looking at it, of looking at it. But the Quran that's says, "Wala bi qawli I'm shedding a doubt on it. I, okay. I, right. I'm shedding doubt on your preposition that the only way of the only logical way of looking at it is divine. I would say actually no. That's not the only logical way. You could have a mul multiple different logical ways of looking at it. One example would be sorcery. I'm not saying it necessarily is Hang sorcery. On, you made an active claim now it comes no. to sorcery, so you need no. to prove that. Now. Uh, no, I'm not making an active. So claim. that's just speculation. I'm not, no, I'm not. I, exactly. If I'm I say, if I say, if I say, I'm saying, yeah. that I'm saying that there is an alternative way of looking at it logically. Yeah. One could say it is sorcery. I could say exactly. If I was a non-Jew and I did not believe in Moses, yes. I could accuse Moses of sorcery. Sure, of course you could. Okay, but so of how do you have mass revelation? So right, exactly. So don't you think the burden of proof is the one who makes the claim? Um, yes, the burden of proof is the one who makes the claim. Good. So now but I'm it's not making a claim. Well, you, you did. You said it could, you said it could be a possibility that it's a sorcery. So now you now you now you have to prove to me. Oh, that it's a possibility. Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, from the preposition that there is such a thing as, sor as sorcery, yeah. and in sorcery you're able to conjure up all sorts of supernatural forces and magical powers and stuff, mm -hmm. um, one may even be able to see into the future. One may be able to get all sorts of hidden knowledge from spiritual spheres of influence, however that works, actually. Um, but if one believes in sorcery, then, then one can come to that conclusion. And therefore, somebody in the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the 8th century, 7th century, I don't even know where he lived, 1400 years ago, um, who, uh, um, in Arabia, if he, maybe, if he, maybe he was a sorcerer, and he managed to get all these hidden knowledge from, uh, from spiritual sources and a sorcery. Maybe. Did, did his not? people believe he was a magician? Um, well, there were people who accused him of it. Yeah, it's just, it, but, but did they know that he was proficient and he was professional in magic? Well, we will never know what they knew in their hearts because that was in their hearts, wasn't it? But hang on. They, the we don't even know their names. Hang on. The reason why they resorted to magic after listening to the recitation of the Quran because they have no other explanation. It's a supernatural. But they knew that Muhammad was not a magician. He was illiterate. He was unlettered. He couldn't even read nor write. He had no knowledge of magic. How do you know that being illiterate means he cannot be a magician? Because there's no because there's no proof, there's no evidence that he, he was well versed in magic. 
and none of the Quraysh... But the, lack yeah. of evidence, I'm sure you can appreciate that lack of evidence itself does not necessarily prove that it is false. I, I can understand that, but then you have to give me some sort of implicit evidence. Otherwise, it's just speculation. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. I am speculating. Yeah, that's what the, I said I was doing. That, that, that's exactly what agnostic atheists but, but do. The cor- but the whole of the Quran. Quran... That's exactly the point I was trying to make. That if that in this alternative timeline, in which mass revelation never happened, and there's therefore there's no Torah... Josh, you should be very and, confident. And, and, therefore, yeah, and therefore there's no Torah. I would be agnostic as to whether or not Josh, Muhammad you is should, a prophet, Josh, depending Josh, on how gullible I am. Joshua, you should be very confident to disprove Muhammad's claim about the Torah. If he's a Why? false prophet... Because, okay, the reason why I say so, because you accuse him of being a false prophet, correct? Yes, I okay, accuse fine. him. Now, why would you need the Torah to prove to him he's a false prophet? Why not just why not just refute his claim in the first place? Scrutinize his claim. Is he lying? Is he deceiving people? Are you that insecure that you need a Torah? Sorry, to can, I just, can, I just, can I just add one thing? Can I yeah, just, uh, sure, why not? What, 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 really? what on earth would be wrong with, with, um, with, with in the timeline we have, which we're in, yeah. where there is mass revelation, with simply saying very, very quickly, well, he contradicts the Torah, the Torah comes from mass revelation. So, it should, so it should be easy for you to just disprove Muhammad's claim. Then. I mean, that is easy. I mean, come on, like one man, I mean, come on, one man testimony. I mean, that is a, that is a, a huge burden. Surely you can disprove him without the Torah. No, because it's zero credibility. I can't disprove zero credibility. No, but can you? Okay, let's let's go. Through like, this. Can, can I disprove Nanak's claim of being a prophet? Without, without the Torah, without yes, the I can. Torah, no, without I can't. the Quran, I can. Without the Torah, no, I can't. Okay, so can okay, I just? I, I just want to mention one thing, right? That you know, um, you said it's possibly it could be magic, right? Yes. Now the Quran makes an active claim. It says, "Wala bi kahin." That this is not the words of a magician or a soothsayer, soothsayer right? It makes a claim that it's not magic. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Quran does say that. Now, it, yeah, no, which, which is good. No, so, Brilliant for it. Yeah, good for it. Now, I'm very happy for it. Well done, Quran. Good. I'll, I'll shake his hand. Right. So you know, in you know, in a time of Moses, right, when yes. Moses opened up the sea, right. If I said to you, that's magic, and that wasn't from God, exactly. that, actually that was inspired by Satan. Satan was the one that caused the sea to open up and then the children of Israel went through. Would you would you accept that from me? I mean, I wouldn't because there's mass revelation. But in an alternative timeline, well, that would be agnostic anyways, which is irrelevant. Okay, so the same way how you reject that it was from Satan, because anyone can argue, a, a, an agnostic, an atheist can say, well, that's Satan that did it. You know, I mean, that wasn't an from God. Couldn't, an agnostic could. Atheists don't believe in Satan. Okay, irrespective whether it was from an agnostic or anyone who doesn't believe in God. That anyone is an anyone who doesn't believe in God yes. can actively make the claim, right? No, that they can't this, make any active claims. Well, they why can not? speculate because they're agnostics. Okay, by definition, yes. yes. However, however, they can say it's magic, just like you say it's the magic yeah, from the could. Quran. Of I'm sure they could. Well, exactly. But you don't believe, <laughs> exactly. you don't believe, right? You don't believe that whoever opened up the partition of the sea, that it was from, from Satan, why? always from... Why don't I believe that? Because you believe it was God that helped Moses exactly. do that. And why do I believe that? Because you believe in God. What, no, why do I believe that? Are you playing a joke? Mass, it's not a joke. Mass revelation. That's why I believe it. I already explained this. Right. That's so, in this timeline. In right. the other timeline where mass revelation. So the same happen, way. Right. Then. Right. Right. Th- th- then. Then I'm agnostic on all of this stuff. Right. All of it. Every single last bit of it. So it should be easier. It should be Wait, hold on. Easier he, 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 hold on one second. He believes in it because on. it's mass revelation. That's why? Do, why? Do you why? Need, why? I wouldn't be disproving that either in no, the other timelines. So what are you talking about? Josh. Josh. Was Muhammad a liar? Was he a liar? Yes. Well, it depends what a liar is. If a liar is a liar, somebody who purposefully makes stuff up. Do you believe that's the case? Well, I don't know because I wasn't in his mind. You don't I. know. I don't know if he purposefully made something up, or if he was simply, if he simply had some sort of mental problem. You see, that's a confirmation bias. But that's all you hold doing. on one second. No. If Prophet in Muhammad, this timeline, wait, hold on one second. No, if Prophet Muhammad timeline, was a liar, hold on. We're brother. talking of, in our timeline when mass revelation did occur. Right, where it did occur, and therefore the Torah is true. The only reason I'm saying Can I say one thing? that yeah, Muhammad you know, is a false prophet is because of that. But in the alternative timeline that we're theorizing yeah. about, in which mass revelation never happens, so the Torah is false, yeah. then I don't need to say anything about Muhammad. I can be agnostic. I've said this before. Yeah, but then Christians can make the same claim. I heard. Of course they uh, could. Oh, so does that mean it's true? No, you can make a exactly. claim, it doesn't make it true. Thank you, Josh. So now you confirm. So now the. Co- confirm so- what? Now you confirm that the mass revelation is not a it's not a necessity. 
It's about the claim and why is it true or why no, is it false? No, because anyone can make a claim, but it doesn't make it true. The claim of mass revelation, however, is different. No, but, but it's a mass no, hold on, claim. See, this on, is one where, second. Yeah, yeah. I, I've explained to him. Okay. A special pleading. One second. No, I've, I've, mass claim. Josh, no, I've explained to you totally about. Definitely. It could never have started as a lie. Okay. It's impossible. Okay. If Prophet Muhammad was a liar, then why? Where, how? How is it? Is confirmed scientifically that the universe is expanding and we know that to be true because in 1952 this was examined this was checked and this was verified right so if prophet muhammad was a liar then therefore the claim of the quran that the universe is expanding will be false it will be a false claim but we know that the universe is expanding we know that that information was only found out in 1952 so we know and i'm sure you would agree with me if you're a truthful person which i assume you are in inshallah josh that you would agree with me that the quran is right because we know that the universe is expanding. We've established that. That's it. Been, that's proven. It's uh, through science. It's been established, and the Quran makes that active claim, and it's true. So why would you deny something exactly. which is actively true? In that, which timeline? Okay. In one. Okay. One thousand four hundred years ago, right? The Quran made the active that's claim. Not what I mean. No, so what, what do you I mean when you say timeline? Because we were talking about two different timelines before. We were doing a Back to the Future thing. We were saying that we're in this timeline where mass revelation did happen and then there's an alternative one where it didn't happen no yeah, i'm so talking which about one are you asking me this are you asking me where mass revelation did not happen or when it did happen brother i'm not even talking about mass revelation no, it's i'm very, talking very about important. i'm talking about the claim it's crucial to my answer. Jo joshua joshua you, you misunderstood right we'll give you we'll give you this mass revelation no okay. problem but if it did happen so it doesn't matter no to problem me. mass so revelation like, no, no problem, no problem, Josh. We can see that. Yes, there was mass revelation, no problem. Okay. The Israelites, they heard God's revelation to Moses. Yes. No problem, right? But that is mutually exclusive to the revelation that Muhammad claims that this was from God. Exactly. So can you, mutually exclusive. Right, so mutually exclusive. But, exclusive. You are, hang on, but you are linking this to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Yes, of course. The reason why you reject Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because there was no mass revelation. No, because there was mass revelation. And because Ma and because Muhammad contradicted the right, so 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 the claim of Moses to be a prophet of God is completely different to the claim that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's a different. Yeah, it's, it's a, a different. It's a type, different. Yeah, it's a different type of claim. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is these are both mutually exclusive. No, but hold on. Even better, I because you're, prophet, you're, 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 you're using exclusive. you're using a mass revelation against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. Is that the reason why he's a false prophet? Yeah, because it contradicts the Torah. And we believe the Torah because of mass revelation. So, yes. Where is that criteria? Where is the criteria? Yeah. In Th that criteria, where is it in the Old Testament? In logic. In no, in no, logic. no, 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 no. This is what you do. No, 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 no. I did it before. You, no, you, you are a Jew, like correct? It. Are you a Jew? I am. Are you a okay. Muslim? Alhamdulillah, I am. Well, there we okay. go. Now, Hashem, now we know Joshua, who we are. Joshua, so Joshua, asking. Joshua, are you... Yes. Okay. Do you go by what the text says before logic? We have to use both. We no, no, I didn't ask you. Text and logic. There's no before. No, 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 no. There is no before. No, no, no. We I'm have not... to use both. Joshua, I asked you the question. No, and I answered you. No, no, no. Do you go by what the text say before logic? I already answered your question. You didn't accept my answer. Let's say. You let's... didn't argue my answer. Okay, so, so Joshua. I'm going to restate it again. Okay, go on. Both. Okay, so let's say, let's say the text doesn't make sense. Logically speaking, yes. Would you still believe it? Well, we have to go to the oral Torah. It's no, no, not about the oral Torah. Why? If it doesn't logically make sense, why do you believe it in the text? Because of mass revelation. Ah, so there you go. So, you have to prove to me from the text there has to be mass revelation for it to be a true prophet. Oh, that's no, true. I that's don't. good. Because the reason no, I but that's what you're asserting. No, Wallahi, that's not Josh. what I'm asserting. That no, you've misunderstood. Wallahi, Josh, you are. You've misunderstood my assertion. Okay, so what did you say? My assertion is that the reason I believe the text to begin with is because there was a mass revelation. And I asked you, is that a necessary criteria to believe in the text? No, the mass revelation. So, so hold on. The the criteria yes. to believe in the text is mass revelation. Is that your criteria? Yes. And is that supported by the text? Supported? In, what do you mean supported? If somebody comes and claims to be a prophet, yes. right, and there was no mass revelation, yes. is he considered to be a false prophet, according to you? It depends if he contradicts the Torah. Okay. Okay, so now you don't have an issue with mass revelation. You have an issue with the fact that Muhammad said was contradicting the Torah, correct? I, 
Okay, I don't know how long we've been arguing. For, okay, but sure. When we started, I, yeah. I, we had exactly this exchange, and people watching. But you well, are not we'll, back. We'll, hang on, you are not back in your claim. If I have any answer to this, I'm gonna have to. Okay, you, you, no, 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 hang on, hang again, on. You, you, no, no. Let's start again. Jo Josh, all the way Josh, back from the Josh, you said, done here. you said, you said, Josh, you said that Muhammad Sallallahu is a false prophet. Because one, there was no mass revelation, and number two, he contradicted the Torah. Am I correct? I said he's a false prophet because he contradicts the Torah. That was the reason I said. And you give an example from the story of Joseph. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, fine. But the brother here, Hamza, shown you that there's even internal contradictions in the Torah. And I already explained that don't straw man Judaism because we have an oral Torah which explains the written. You can't accuse us of straw man argument unless you provide your own case. Not true, because because the same way I would not expect you to have memorized all the hadiths, you should not have, expect, have, have, have expected me to memorize all of the all of the Torah. Yeah, okay. but if, but enough, if, so if there we, are internal so we, contradictions, so we, exactly. if there are internal contradictions, then we don't we don't have to then go by your criteria. Exactly. Because if there's internal contradictions and you need oral oral explanation, oral Torah to explain what's in here, then I'm sorry to say we I'm don't have to, to use exactly. your own criteria. This is the exactly. reason why I was actually going. Down directly to the Quran itself rather than using the criteria you, you have because we know that there's contradictions which you have affirmed in fact last week you affirmed that there's contradictions in the Torah and that exactly. you have you have to use external sources to explain the, 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 um, the verses that you think that is contradictory so therefore that's the reason why as a Muslim, we don't have to use your criteria because there's contradictions in it exactly. anyway. You wouldn't use our so, criteria even, even, even if it, it, you wouldn't use our criteria anyway. And the reason you won't is not because you don't think it makes sense. It's instead because the Quran tells you that our Torah is corrupt. No, but it does. No, but it both. No, but it. That's the reason. No, but it's both. Don't, don't play games with me. Don't say that, that that if the Quran had not said it's corrupt, that you would have come up with this all by, all by yourself. No, even if there was no Quran and we just examined it, just examined it just by looking at it and then scrutinizing it carefully, we will find contradictions in it. Without the Quran or with the Quran. That's we true. It, thank you. Thank so, you. so what I'm that's saying to you, right, is no, that... But what are you going to then do with the contradictions? That's the question. No, but... What's the premise? Is the premise that, ah, there would never be a contradiction in this book, and therefore if I find one, then that that um, disqualifies no, the what book. What I am book. asserting... Or, or, is the, or, or is the premise, a, a, a different premise, which is that, that, which is that ah, God deliberately put contradictions here and he also gave us the oral explanations of how to work out, how to resolve them in order to learn X, 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 no, no, Y, no, no. and Z from it. I believe that the, the, the Torah was corrupted by mankind, yeah, right? You believe that because of the Quran. You've just gone back. So We're hold on talking a minute. about the timeline that you just allowed us to go into, which there's no Quran. No, but hold so on don't one go second. Back to the Quran for on me, because that's not going to help you. No, hold on. I'm not going to the Quran. He's I'm not going to your own about corruption. No, I am talking about corruption. But what I'm saying to you, for example, when it says that God rested and was refreshed, right? Sorry, I have to use this example, and I know you don't like it, but I have to use this example because you believe that it's the inner word of God. Yes. But you affirmed this week, last week, and the week before that the, that the, the Torah has contradictions inside of it, right? So if it has contradictions inside of it, then I would then assert... So if, even if I was just... For argument's sake, let's say I wasn't a Muslim. Okay. Let's say I just looked at it from the lenses of someone who diacritically looks at um, holy scriptures. Just by looking at the holy, your um, the, 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 the Torah and examining it carefully, I can then argue it's not the word of God because of these contradictions, right? Of course, Be you could argue it. Exactly. The question is, does your argument hold weight? Absolutely, it holds Absolutely. weight. And the reason why it holds weight, the reason why it holds weight, is because. The, even the Quran itself gives a, a, a criteria. The Quran says, if this book, meaning the Quran, was other than the Creator, truly within it, ikhtilaf and kathira, that you'll find a lot of contradictions, discrepancies, etc. Right? So that's the falsification test the Quran gives. The Quran, no, 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 no. Listen, listen carefully. The reason why I went back to the Quran because then we can make that assessment on your book. But if why it even was that assessment, if you only got that from the Quran, well, we're talking about an argument in which there is no Quran. But That's hang on, the hang on, Josh. Hang on, no, Josh. Hold, hold on, on one second. Sorry, sorry. Outside of this framework, uh, I mean, Josh. Uh, hang on, hang on. So now going into a different framework. Hang on, no, I can, I'm, 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 hang on, Josh, 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 Josh. That's exactly what we're trying to do, which is you're doing exactly the same thing that we're doing to you. You're using your own Torah. To falsify Muhammad's claim. So no, why do you have an issue? So no, why that's exactly? Not I, no, exactly. No, it's not. You did. I, no, you're not following the argument that we're having.
doing? We've been just through this. You just did that. No, just did that. no, because when you allowed, when you said that we're going to do two frameworks, and, uh, right? Where we're going to talk about, let's assume the mass evolution did not happen. I was very, very clear every time I spoke. I was talking within that timeline, without within that framework. No, you misunderstood my point. Clear. No, you say Muhammad is a false prophet because the, the because he did not meet the the, the criteria in the Torah, correct? Yes, okay. and I said that if there had okay. not been is, the Torah, I would be agnostic about isn't that, it. Isn't that circular reasoning? No, it's not. Of course it is. So why do you have an issue when Hamza is talking about the Qur'an and the falsification test that's within the Qur'an? I don't have an issue per se until, but I didn't until Hamza said, now we're going to assume there's no Qur'an. No, 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 he no, never no said that. No, hold on, hold on. Let me clarify. He said, yeah. even if there was no Quran, I would still, uh, because, blah, blah, because X, Y, and Z. No, hold on. And then he then brought the Quran. No, even if it's not a Muslim. No, no, he said, even Wait. if not, if I'm not a Muslim, yeah, I would inquire into it. And why would you not be a Muslim when you obviously believe in the Quran just no, by no, looking no, no, at no, it? No, 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 listen, so listen. So the only reason you'd not be a Muslim right. is because there's no Quran. Right. Okay, Dr. Maurice Bukel, right? I'm going to give you an example, right? Because maybe using me as an example, you may think it's a bad example because I'm a Muslim. Okay. So let's use someone who wasn't a Muslim. Okay. Dr. Maurice Bukel wasn't a Muslim. Yeah. He examined the Torah yeah. and he saw that it was full of he saw that it was full of contradictions. Yeah. He saw that it was full of errors, yeah. etc. Yeah. Right? Now, the reason why I was going back to the Quran, right? Because I feel that the Quran uses an excellent criteria to determine exactly. if it is from God or not. And I don't and when I examine the Quran, for example, when the Quran says, right, that if this book came from other than the creator, truly within it, you will find many discrepancies. Oh, God, I've got so many of them. Um, now it says truly within it. Fall over eventually. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> and it will all fall over. No, it says truly within it, you will find. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I've got one, but eventually there'll be so many <laughs> that on here he's going to fall over. Well, yeah, I, think so. I think it's so. I think so. If you put lots on me, I'll also fall over. Oh, no, you're in the hot seat, don't worry. Okay. You'll, so, you'll bury me in my cafe. So anyway, as I was saying to you, like, the Quran says, right, if it came from other than the Creator, you will find discrepancies, okay. right? So as someone who's looking into the Quran and looking at this verse, I feel... That I don't see the harm in applying that same criteria to the Bible because you believe, right, that the Bible is the word of God. You believe that it doesn't have no mistakes, you believe there's no errors, etc. So if it's from God, then truly within it you shall not find discrepancies, just like the Quran makes that there's claim. A difference between discrepancies and mistakes. Because you can have purposeful discrepancies, you can have mistaken discrepancies. And that's the issue. In Judaism, we don't believe that the discrepancies you'll find are mistaken. We believe they are purposeful and they are explained in the old Torah. That's what we believe. Okay, well, I would dispute that because I because I brought up to you in Genesis chapter 1 where there were errors. Right, and of course, listen, no. hear me out, hear me out, I know errors the oral Torah. Mistaken. That errors means mistaken, that doesn't Hang on, even I'm for saying. the sake of argument, no problem, even for the sake of argument, you say it's a mistake. No, if I'm saying why, it's a how, purposeful how, how, Okay, so... Uh, God put that on purpose. Okay, so why so, would God fool people then? Exactly. No, because God's not fooling people, because God gave us not only something written, but something oral as well. Does God make mistakes? No, that's okay. what I just said. No okay, I literally just said, you listen to a word I was No, I, I did, I did. So, what did I say? What's no, the you nuance? No, no, you say, you say that there's a difference between just, um, contradiction and mistakes, correct? No, I'm saying you, that you there's did. a difference between mistaken discrepancies and purposeful discrepancies. Okay, so in other words, you're okay, saying fine. that the oral Torah is the explanation to these discrepancies. Yes. Right. And these discrepancies are there on purpose, not as mistakes. Right. I still will charge you that it's still um, something that is still, uh, in my opinion, I'll call it an error, irrespective exactly. of the oral Torah. Okay. Now, I get the fact that you have the oral Torah that explains this. Yes. However, however, you still have to explain to me, right, when God says in Genesis chapter 1 that he's created light on the first day, right, and he created a source of light on the fourth day, give me an evidence from the oral Torah to explain this discrepancy. Why do I need to do that? Right. The reason why you need to do that, right, is because you said earlier, right, that in order to explain these discrepancies, you have to go to the oral Torah. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking you right now, can you explain to me from the oral Torah this 
problematic contradiction. Thank you. Right now, no, because I'm not an because I'm not an encyclopedia. I already said this. Okay. I have not memorized the, all of the oral Torah off by heart. No problem. I but know, would you look into it? I know a tiny fraction of, the, the, of what there is to know within the oral Torah. Yeah. And I would assume uh, I'm, I'm lowering expectations here. I would assume that you also have memorized a tiny bit of the hadith. Yes. A tiny bit. <clears throat> okay, so w w w so would you be willing to inquire into that sure. issue? Okay, sure. no, no, no problem. No problem. problem. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Sure. Yeah? Okay then, uh, I've got to go. I've got to pray. We agree to disagree? We agree to disagree. We agree to disagree. The truth will prevail. Yes, Josh, it will. Lovely <laughs> speaking care, to you. Lovely. Nice to meet you, man. All right. All we can say, may Allah guide Josh, inshallah. Amen. Amen.